Thank you. Uh, greetings and comradely welcome to all attendees. My thank you to our organisers and the other speakers for their excellent contributions. And I must say I feel somewhat underqualified considering I'm not a director or a professor of anything, uh, but I'm very happy to be here. I need not repeat the heaps of praise piled atop Mr Ross's book, for I share them wholeheartedly. Let me say clearly, the question of China is unavoidable. Her critical position in the global economy and international system make this so. Therefore, it is equally unavoidable that all manner of opinions on China arise. These opinions range from the genuine, well-meaning and research commentary to the bad faith, anti-communist and lazy stereotypes that have become all too common. Therefore, I will say plainly, if you wish to understand the very fundamental conditions that have made China the power it is today, it would be a much simpler task to throw out nearly every other book written by a Westerner and pick up this one book by John Ross. This is a man who not only has a deep and intimate understanding of China, but he understands China in the way that they themselves do. It is a perspective which allows John to act for us as the non-Chinese as a bridge into their understanding. This book will answer many of the questions that you have about China. Now that I hope my endorsement of this book is clear, I would like to sort of use my remaining time to contribute to this discussion by explaining, as this book does, the necessity of claiming China's advances in the name of socialism and Marxism, uh, Marxism and to do that sort of express the spirit of this book, uh, which is contained in perhaps my favorite chapter, which is the third chapter, which is uh, China as a socialist country in line with Marx. I would ask you to cast your mind back 100 years to this exact month in Shanghai, China, the first national Congress of the Communist Party would still be ongoing. At this meeting, there was 12 people representing 50 party members alongside two representatives from the Communist International. Um, the final day of that meeting actually had to be held on a cruise ship because they were being sort of harassed in their original location by like uh, French colonial authorities. Um, the line laid down by that Congress was one of revolution. However, they had a daunting task ahead of them. China carved up by foreign imperialists, riven by warlords and a feudal system uh, where landlords held power of life and death over hundreds of millions of peasants who were kept in destitution and an economy that had once been the greatest in the world was reduced to among the very poorest. Yet return your mind to the present. China has a rover on Mars, her own space station launched after the US kicked her out of uh, space cooperation and China is now the world's preeminent economic power. Domestically, the lives of Chinese people have undergone a hitherto unseen transformation, the life expectancy of nearly a fifth of the world's population, actually over a fifth of the world's population, has uh, doubled and over 800 million people have been lifted out of poverty, which is the largest reduction in history. So what happened? And to answer that question is not only for the sake of historical clarity, but to help ourselves because we still suffer from poverty inadequate and unequal development and particularly in the global south. For me, the importance of China to world socialism is that China answers the questions of the challenges of socialism, which are to develop the productive forces faster than capitalism, to develop productivity faster than capitalism, to deliver higher living standards than what capitalism, uh, capitalism can deliver, and to achieve a greater national strength and meet people's needs better than Western models. And I think China shows that this is entirely possible. Uh, to explain why we should absolutely claim this for Marxism and why this is very much in line with Marx, I would like to uh, say a quote by this great man behind me, Mr. Friedrich Engels, uh, who wrote once, and I quote, communism is for us not a state of affairs which is to be established and a, an ideal which reality will have to adjust itself, Rather, we call communism the real movement which abolishes the present state of things. So it is not, it's by not understanding this quote, which has led a lot of people to confusion about China's model, because 
for a lot of people, uh, they view socialism as sort of a fixed ideal, a fixed sort of state of affairs, uh, one particular model, which may be for a lot of people what the Soviet Union had at one point in history, uh, as opposed to seeing socialism as a process, as something which emerges from capitalism, which emerges from the contradictions of capitalism and contains many of the hallmarks of capitalism. So obviously when people who are not familiar with sort of the Marxist methodology, when they see China, they are confused because they, because it has not yet reached uh, the highest level of socialism, yet it is still undergoing that socialist process, the one described by Marx and Engels. It has to be understood socialism as something which emerges dialectically and not something which is merely established overnight. So in this spirit, we can say China is undoubtedly a socialist country. It was Deng Xiaoping who once said, we cannot expect Marx to provide ready-made answers to questions that arise over a hundred years after his death. A true Marxist-Leninist, he said, must understand and carry on and develop Marxism-Leninism in light of the current situation. Uh, Marx and Engels emphasized repeatedly throughout their works that they were not writing dogmas to be repeated, but they were writing a living theory. And it was Lenin who summarized this best when he said, we do not regard Marx's theory as something completed and inviolable. On the contrary, we are convinced that it has only laid the foundation stone of a science that socialists must develop in all directions if we wish to keep pace with life. And this is what China has done. Therefore, as socialists, we must, as John rightly said, emancipate our minds and seek truth from facts. And that is to say that China's road and the line of the Communist Party of China is consistent with the principles and methodology of Marxist theory. And it was and it's figures like Mao Zedong, Deng Xiaoping and Xi Jinping, which have added to and advanced this theory. China, as John explains in the book, adheres to the primary stage of socialism. This is a theory which regards the stages of socialist development that a socialist society undergoes. These principles were laid down by Marx in the critique of the Gopher program, and they were also explained by Lenin. With its revolution, China established a political base for socialism, yet uh, a per people's uh, democratic dictatorship, yet obviously the economic system of socialism is something which emerges over a long period of time, Lenin wrote that socialism, the transition from capitalism to socialism, takes place over an entire historical epoch. And I think that's really what this book can help us understand, that historical epoch, that journey under which China is going, and why it is indeed a Marxist journey, and why it's so important for us to claim it for Marxism and not allow reactionaries to claim it for capitalism, because this is one of the greatest victories in human history for prosperity. It must be ours. And to sort of end, I want to end on a quote from Xi Jinping, who said this, we should have a deep understanding of the dialectical relationship between the long term goal of communism and the common ideal of building socialism with Chinese characteristics. The communist ideals would be no more than empty talk without our efforts to develop Chinese socialism and rejuvenate the Chinese nation. Our confidence in the path, theory, system, and culture of socialism with Chinese characteristics can ultimately be condensed into faith in socialism and Marxism. And yes, so that's the point I would like to make. And yes, thank you for having me and thank you for letting me speak and buy this book. Very good. <laughs>